Question 50 states, what is required in the second commandment? The second commandment requires the receiving, observing, and keeping pure and entire all such religious worship and ordinances as God hath appointed in his word. Last week we provided the introduction to the second commandment. In understanding fully what was provided to us, we can see the understanding and the uniform theme that we established before we started the study of the commandments. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Today we will be more particular. The answer states the second commandment requires the receiving, observing, and keeping pure and entire all such worship religious and ordinances as God has appointed in his word. Thus forth, we have already established the only ways and means that God has appointed his worship of his ordinance, they are prescribed in his word. And to continue and succeed from that, we see what those ordinances are. The catechism question, question 108, states in detail, particular prayer and thanksgiving in the name of Christ. The reading, the preaching, and the hearing of the word. The administration and the receiving of the sacraments. The discipline provided and the structure of church government. The maintenance of ministries and the like thereof. Religious fasting, oath and vowing and swearing by the name of God. Disproving and distesting and opposing all false worship by thus removing all monuments of idolatry. These are the ordinances prescribed by the scriptures and we are to adhere to them. But if you notice in the answer, and I repeat again, if you notice in the answer, my wish the, <laughs> the divines are providing in the catechism, the second commandment in requiring us to understand our duties in these adjectives, to receive, to observe, and to keep pure. Why do the divines make such a notion before they go on to describe these particular ordinances? Because your duty in understanding how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind is thus to understand how to perfect these attitudes. So thus, when it states to receive all such worship and ordinances, you are subjecting yourself and welcoming all facets of duties that God prescribed in his worship with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Again, to observe what is being understood with all worship and ordinances, you are fulfilling and complying with absolute reverence to even the most minute detail what can be deduced by good and necessary conscience, but what God has instructed in worship with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But then thus, to see the succession forward, to keep it pure, all in its entirety of worship and ordinance prescribed by God, you are maintaining the particular details of his rule and you have not left out any facet of expectation he has in his commands. So to even make it more simple, you would have preserved it from corruption. To even make it more simple, you are not to add to it and forward more, you are not to take away from it. He states, and I will conclude with this from the very words of God himself, whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do it, you shall not add away from it, nor should you take away from it. Deuteronomy 12, 32. So in conclusion, we understand in that uniform theme, I can't stress enough, and we'll continue to stress it, so that way you understand that it's not these particular actions that is what makes you right from the eyes of God, is to understand that in showing his love, he expects your obedience. And he expects you to do it with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all 
your mind.